Hello everyone, and welcome to part two of my critique of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Part two is going to cover episodes three and four, so if you have not watched part one and may want to, you can click the link in the description or click the little icon above. Since part one of my review already had an intro, I'd say let's just go ahead and get to the episode, shall we? Part three begins with an intercutting sequence of Obi-Wan meditating and Darth Vader putting his suit on. Actually a decent sequence, I would say. Visually well done and cool to look at. One of the few things I like about this episode. So after Darth Vader suits up, he is talking to Third Sister, telling her that Kenobi is what matters most, and that if she proves herself, she will get the position of Grand Inquisitor. I must say, this is quite a room you have, Darth Vader. Ah, look at all that lava and fire that burned me to a crisp. Cutting back to Obi-Wan, Leia starts being annoying again and asks if they can use the Force to make the ship go faster. Obi-Wan says that isn't how it works, and Leia asks what does it feel like. Have you ever been afraid of the dark? How does it feel when you turn on the light? I feel safe. Yes, it feels like that. Okay. I can buy that. So Obi-Wan fixed the hockey puck robot, and the ship is now on approach to the planet Mapuzo. The ship lands, and Obi-Wan and Leia sneak off and start walking north. Obi-Wan talks with Leia about how this planet had fields and families, and then the Empire came and ravaged it all. But during conversation, Obi-Wan seems to have some trauma triggered because he sees a vision of Anakin standing in the distance. You know, for future generations, can we try something else to convey being haunted by your past than just a spooky vision? I'm honestly finding this to be quite overused and extremely blatant. Like character A has a vision of character B, character A looks away for a second, turns back, and character B is gone. Like there's gotta be a more creative and subtle way to establish a character is haunted by the past or suffering trauma, such as expressing it through conversation with another character, or just having the actor express through good facial expressions when the event in question is brought up. Whatever it is we do, I think this spooky vision thing is really overdone and really blatant. So as Obi-Wan and Leia walk their we cut to the Inquisitor ship arriving on the planet that contains an Inquisitor base I guess they designed to look like a holocron? And we get a slightly elongated segment of Reva walking from the ship platform to some sort of underwater meeting room. She says that Obi-Wan is in one of the mining systems and that they should send out the probes. But Fifth Brother says she is in charge here and that he's the next one in line. So Reva says she spoke to Darth Vader and that he asked her to lead the hunt and that the probes need to be sent out. And the Inquisitors just take her word for it, I guess, even though they don't have a good reason to. Is this how you assume chain of command among Inquisitors? You just say, hey, I spoke to Vader or someone above me and he said I'm in charge now, so you listen to me. And everyone just believes it because? Could anyone just walk up and say Vader gave them leeway to take command and everyone just accepts it? This is very problematic in terms of chain of command and also can be highly abused if no one ever bothers to confirm the claims that Vader spoke to someone. I will get what I deserve, and so will you. Ah, uh, sorry, fifth brother, but you're no match for the comedic brilliance of Riva. Send out the probes, do it now. Back to Mapuzo, Obi-Wan and Leia arrive at the coordinates that Haja told them to go to, but no one seems to be around. Maybe they're just late? Maybe it was a lie. We don't know if maybe- No one is coming here, Leia. Jeez, calm down, Obi-Wan. You literally just got here. You don't think you should look around a little bit or just wait a little bit to see if someone comes? Just cause the party you are meeting is not here exactly when you are doesn't mean they're not coming. Take your own advice you gave in Attack of the Clones. Patience, use the force. Think. So they just assume they are on their own instantly, and Leia decides to wave down the oncoming transport. Leia starts talking to the driver, even though she isn't supposed to talk, but also Obi-Wan just lets her do most of the talking, despite the fact that her talking has not helped really much in past situations. The driver offers them a ride to the nearest port, and Obi-Wan initially refuses, but Leia convinces him to take the ride. And Obi-Wan just follows because... because. So he gets in the back, but not without noticing that this is an Imperial transport. Oh great. Now our characters are in quite an unnecessarily risky situation that they didn't need to be in the first place. Thanks, Leia. So while riding the transport, there's a little conversation inning happening between the driver and our heroes. Good people out tall. Listen to the Empire? Absolutely. We love the Empire. Be quiet. But oh no, what dumb luck. There happens to be just four random stormtroopers out in the middle of the field who also want to get a ride. What kind of a goddamn kawinky dink is that? So the random ass field stormtroopers get in the back with Obi-Wan and Leia and the driver asks them where they are coming from. Where are you all coming from? 
They're moving us around. Looking for a Jedi. What? What? He has to be talking about Obi-Wan, right? That's who they're looking for? If that is the case, how the hell are they not recognizing him right now? Or at least being somewhat suspicious. Why, do they not know what he looks like? Do they not have a picture? Were they sent out to look for a Jedi and not given any indication of what he might look like? And they sent you out to some random field to look for him? How incompetent is that? Are we absolutely positive we aren't in a Mel Brooks parody of Star Wars? Hey, you little girl and you with the robe. Have you seen a Jedi and girl who looks and dresses just like both of you, bro? If you see them, let us know. We're on the hunt for one, okay? While on the way, the stormtroopers decide to question Obi-Wan and ask why they are all the way out here. Leia says they were out here visiting the place where Orden first met Luma's mother, and that sadly, she isn't around anymore and times have been difficult. The stormtrooper asks them if they have seen a Jedi. Do you have any information about a Jedi? Are you sure he's even on this planet? They know what they're doing, Leia. Oh my god, that is by far one of the stupidest slips I have ever seen. And it was made by freaking Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. He just said her real name out loud. That has to be it, right? It's over. The stormtroopers heard that and now they notice contradictions in your story. They have to be suspicious enough to want to question and further detain them for interrogation. And I would think they would know Obi-Wan is traveling with the little girl, and they might also know that that girl's name is Leia. So after Obi-Wan slips and the stormtroopers point out the slip, what then happens? I thought her name was Luma. That was her mother's name. Sometimes when I look at Luma, I see her mother's face. Well, just keep your eyes open. Report it if you see anything. Are you for real? They just brush it off? The showrunners have to make Obi-Wan stupid, but to compensate so that he isn't detained or caught, they make the troopers even more stupid. Obi-Wan makes one of the most obvious slips, and they have to make these batch of stormtroopers completely oblivious to carry on the story. You know what would have made this better? Not having this happen at all. Take it out of the script. It's stupid and makes no sense, so remove it. Oh god, this is embarrassing. I'm surprised someone wrote this. This is trash. So thanks to coincidence and stupidity being on the side of our heroes, they managed to not get captured by those troopers. Leia looks at Obi-Wan and gets the impression something is up, so she asks, you knew her. My real mother. How in the hell did you deduce that? <gasps> Maybe she has the force. The whole time I've known you, you've been hiding something. Well, yeah, you just met. He's not going to tell you everything. That's not how it works when you are introduced to someone, Leia. You don't tell all your secrets at once. Soon, the transport comes across an inspection station. Freck the driver gets out and tells the troopers that he found two strays that may be of interest to them. The troopers acknowledge and go to check out the two. Don't put your hood up, Obi-Wan. The troopers are going to want to see your face, so trying to hide it just makes you look worse. Obi-Wan seems to have quite a talent for putting his hood down when he should have it up and putting it up when he should have it down. They tell Leia and Kenobi to get out of the vehicle and bring about a probe droid to inspect them. Yeah, so Kenobi is totally doomed now. The troopers say for him to raise his head so that the probe droid can scan him. He does so and the probe detects seconds later that it is Obi-Wan. Once that happens, Obi-Wan whips out his blaster and another poorly made fight scene ensues that was made by a studio with lots of resources, time, and big budgets. <laughs> Similarly to how I talked about the choreography in the first opening scene, let's talk about what's wrong with this scene. Firstly, there is a short shot of Obi-Wan slowly reaching for his gun. The troopers should have been able to see that quite clearly. It's extremely obvious. But nonetheless, once Obi-Wan shoots the probe droid, you think the troopers would shoot him as a result of having their guns train on him. But no, the explosion gets them completely off guard. They cover their heads like it's falling debris. While they are distracted, instead of Obi-Wan just shooting them where they stand, he instead runs over to the one on the left and throws him to the right? Why grab him? It's so much easier to just shoot him. Or here's an idea, Obi-Wan. Maybe pull out your saber? Like you're now exposed, so why not? So Obi-Wan grabs this guy. You may think he does it to use as a body shield or something, but no, he doesn't. Obi-Wan is just dragging this trooper and then shoots the other one in the leg. Then he spins around releasing the trooper he was holding onto, and then shoots the other guy again, except in the chest this time. Why not shoot that trooper in the chest the first time? Kenobi runs past the other trooper and shoots this one at the gate. This trooper at the gate, by the way, keeping in line with the annoying cliche, keeps missing Obi-Wan every time he takes a shot. Obi-Wan shoots the trooper, but only in the leg. Again. Obi-Wan takes the trooper he just walked past and flips him on his back, not shooting him or making sure he's out of commission. Then he shoots at the trooper at the gate again, landing another fatal shot. He then grabs Freck to use as a body shield, and this trooper, for some reason holding his gun with one hand, shoots at Kenobi, and who would have guessed, 
Misses. Kenobi shoots and lands a shot, causing the trooper to fall face down first and be cut in half by the laser gate. But now, one last remaining trooper grabs Leia, holding her hostage, and tells Kenobi to put down the gun. He starts to do so slowly, but then, boom, gets a shot off. Well, that was quite lucky for Obi-Wan. He could have shot Leia if he was just inches off. You know, I just realized again, why doesn't Kenobi use the Force? In fact, why hasn't he used the Force at all this entire fight? Okay, so this fight scene is now over, thank God, and Obi-Wan takes Leia and tries to shut down the gate. Since the gate is not responding, he just decides to shoot it. Could have walked around it, but okay. They start to run, but wow, a transport full of three troopers arrive just before they leave. The troopers get out of the transport and tell Kenobi and Leia to get down on the ground. An Imperial officer gets out of the transport and looks like she's going to shoot Kenobi, but instead shoots the three troopers. <gasps> she's the spy! It's Hux all over again. I'm the spy. What? They'll have sent a transmission. We have to hurry. Who sent a transmission? The troopers? How? They were shot dead. Back to the Inquisitor base, they just received word that Kenobi is on Mapuzo. Reva goes to inform Vader, but Fifth Brother tells her he's already been informed. He was most appreciative. The Inquisitors instruct the battalions to shut down the ports and lock down the area. We cut back to Mapuzo, where the spy tells Obi-Wan, I was on my way when the probes arrived, but you'd already gone. I hadn't expected anyone to come. Oh, so if he did wait, she would have shown up. See, Obi-Wan? If you just waited, you would have been fine. And wow, Leia was actually right about this for once, so I guess I gotta give her a point for that. But I also must comment, you guys are kinda looking suspicious right now. There's an Imperial officer with two people, one who looks like a Jedi the Empire is searching for, and another girl that he's with. With, so the Imperial spy tells them to wait there until she gives the all-clear sign. Obi-Wan talks with Leia in the meantime, and Leia feels very remorseful about the whole situation. They don't mean to run away. Uh, yes you did. Every instance where you ran away, you meant to do it intentionally. I think you're trying to say you didn't mean to get kidnapped? Which... Yes, of course, no one means to get kidnapped, but you did mean to run away. You're just using the wrong words here, kid. Anyway, the Imperial in disguise signals them the okay to get across and come into the building. Droid maintenance. It's all automated. No one ever comes in here. Uh-huh. Why do I feel like that won't be true in the very near future? Well, let's say hello. He's, he's just a loader. They don't allow them to communicate. Why? What purpose does that serve? If you have questions or need any information from the loader droids, what do you do? This seems like a very counterproductive protocol for a droid to have. So they enter a secret doorway into a secret room, and Obi-Wan asks what this place is. Tala says it is a safe house of many in which Jedi and other allies use these to get to Jabim, where they are given new identities to avoid the Empire's radar. It also appears that those who come through here leave their markings in the wall. While inside, there is a knock at the door. Two stormtroopers are outside wanting to search the premises. Uh-huh. What happened to nobody ever comes in here, Tala? A Jedi was seen entering this camp. Oh, so someone did see Obi-Wan. Maybe for future sneaking about, he should not wear clothes that anyone would take as Jedi clothing. Just a thought, you know? So the troopers come in and search around, but do not find anything. They leave, and Tala says they must move now since they are potentially compromised. Leia sees she has a gun and asks if she can learn to shoot. She'll make a good fighter one day. Yes, I think you might be right. You get it? Cause she's Princess Leia! So Obi-Wan, Leia, and Tala suit up, and Tala opens the secret door, but just before they walk into it, Obi-Wan senses a disturbance. And of course, 100% of the audience knows Darth Vader must be close by. Obi-Wan goes to look through the window, and what the heck, it's nighttime now! It was literally daylight two minutes ago when the troopers came in. Is daylight faster on this planet or something? So we see the Inquisitors arrived, and following behind is Darth Vader, who is on the hunt for Kenobi. Right, so Obi-Wan, why are you still here? Why do you continue to spy on Vader? You know who he is, and if you can sense him, he can probably sense you too. So you should leave. Run with Tala and Leia through the tunnels and get to the port. Or at least not stay there and look through the window. You're a sitting duck. What reason do you have to continue to stay here and spy on Vader? It's time to go. No, you need to go with her. Don't send Leia back there. It's not gonna do anything. You need to get back there. Get farther away from Vader. Well, it's over now. Vader now knows that Kenobi is close by. Maybe if Kenobi ran, this wouldn't have happened. So after Vader senses that Obi-Wan is close by, he force chokes a random civilian to draw Kenobi out of his hiding area. Vader even kills a random civilian and uses the force on more than one person. Seeing this, Kenobi tells Tala to get Leia to Alderaan, saying he will draw Vader and the troopers away from them so that way Leia is not put in any danger. Well, if you're going to draw them away, Kenobi, do it now so that way Vader stops torturing the 
random innocent civilians? Because the more you sit there and watch without doing anything, the more it makes you look cowardly and out of character. So Kenobi gets outside finally and continues to watch from another POV. Vader is about to torture more innocent civilians, but then turns his head into Obi-Wan's direction. Horror cliche number 604. Character A is standing somewhere, character B looks over in his direction, and then suddenly character A is no longer there. We already had this trope be emphasized in this same episode with the vision of Hayden Christensen. Stop it. So Obi-Wan is now running away from the town into an outer mining facility. While jogging out, he sees that Vader is already here and Vader whips out his red glow stick. Amazing that Vader knew he would somehow be exactly here, but even more than that, how the hell did he get here before Obi-Wan? Obi -Wan. So Obi-Wan takes his saber and is ready to have his first showdown with Vader. Oh, wait, no. Uh, oh, he runs away. Um, okay. Don't know what that is going to do for you, Obi-Wan. Like, do you think that's going to deter Vader in any way? Are you scared? If you're scared, then why didn't you run away initially when Vader first arrived? So Obi-Wan runs away, but still can tell Vader is close by and whips out his lightsaber. By the way, kind of a nitpick, but I am very convinced that whoever worked on the sound of this episode just copy and pasted the sound effects from A New Hope into this particular scene. I'll play both and see if you can hear what I'm talking about. See? It's pretty much copy-paste, don't you think? And they didn't even do it well. You can hear the swing effects clearly cut off quite abruptly. Like, yes, this is kind of a nitpick. Does it affect the story? Not really, but I find it quite distracting, honestly. I think I could do this better. In fact, I'm gonna give it a shot. I have some saber sound fonts that I use for my custom sabers. I'll see if I can use those to make this sound better. Here, this is what mine sounds like. Now I guess it's up to you if you think that sounds better, but I think it does. Like, take a little pride into your sound editing, Lucasfilm. Anyway, Vader shows up again and tells Obi-Wan to stop running away. What have you become? I am what you made me. And Obi-Wan runs off again. Why? What's the point, Obi-Wan? We trying to play tag or something? He's just gonna follow you. Back at the village, the troops and Inquisitors begin their search of the area. And it just so happens that Reva, out of all characters here, happens to find the building where Leia and Tala were. What a juicy coincidence! So Tala and Leia are running through the tunnels, but Leia insists that Tala goes back to help Obi-Wan and that she can go by herself. Definitely not a good idea. Every time, Leia, you've wandered off, you have made the situation worse, so you all need to stay together. Back to Kenobi, he is still on the run, but not before Vader tries to snake attack him. I guess Vader held his breath to pull that off, because there is no way he could have snuck up on Obi-Wan without doing so. And finally, we get what we were all waiting for in this series. Men touching swords. Yeah, the fight is really not well put together. The choreography is so underwhelming and downright terrible. I mean, look at it. <laughs> Yeah, hit the saber in the same place three times. That's super effective. Maybe they just gave them sabers and were like, hey, just swing them around. We'll fix it in post later. Do I even need to show prequel footage to demonstrate how much better those lightsaber fights are? <laughs> Heck, even the original trilogy has better lightsaber fighting. <laughs> Even fan films are better. Or hell, look at one of my favorite independently made lightsaber fights that was released 16 years ago. Oh. 
Why even bother having them lightsaber fight if it's going to be this lame? If this is the best you can do, I would rather not have this fight happen at all. It's embarrassing. Please put some actual effort into the fighting. Just a little creativity and effort, please. Back to Tala and Leia. Tala, I guess, starts to worry about Obi-Wan and Leia tells her to go. Tala agrees and tells Leia to keep running until she gets to the end of the tunnel and meet the pilot. You're going along with this? Obi-Wan trusted you to get her to Alderaan. The whole point of Obi-Wan staying was for him to distract the Imperials and Vader while you focused on helping Leia. Now who's going to help Leia? Does the pilot even know where they're supposed to go? What are you even going to do against the Imperials or for that matter, Darth Vader? It is a better idea to stay with Leia. But no, I guess not. So now Leia is all alone running in the tunnel. Jeez, what's the worst that can happen? Back to the underwhelming tapping of swords, Vader gets a small upper hand and Force pushes Kenobi back. You should have killed me when you had the chance. Good grief. Can your dialogue be any more generic? Throughout this entire encounter, their tiny share of dialogue has not been dramatic or tense at all because they aren't saying anything pertaining to their past history or conflict. All Darth Vader and Obi-Wan are saying is dialogue that the writers could have copied from any generic action movie and pasted it in here, making this long-awaited encounter underwhelming and very unsatisfying. When you have two characters who have had a history together, usually to emphasize their history and to show drama and conflict between the two, you would want specific dialogue that would pertain to their specific relationship and what they have been through together. Not only does it show tension and build unique drama between the two characters, but it also can and convey information to the audience. A decent example is in Kung Fu Panda, between Tai Long and Master Shifu. While they are fighting, they have dialogue that shows their conflict and their emotional turmoil between each other. And it conveys information about their relationship to the audience. We're not meant to be the dragon warrior. That was not my fault. Not your fault? Who filled my head with dreams? Who drove me to train until my bones cracked? Who denied me my destiny? What I ever did? I did to make you proud! Tell me how proud you are, Chifu! I have always been proud of you. It was my pride that blinded me. I loved you too much to see what you were becoming. What I was turning you into. I'm sorry. And taking another example from the same animation company, take a look at this scene from Puss in Boots. Humpty Alexander Dumpty. How dare you show your face to me? I know you're angry. There's new boots? No! They are the same boots I wore when you betrayed me. You left me cracked in pieces on a bridge, surrounded by soldiers. They wrote a song about it. And how did we get on that bridge in the first place? Compare that to this here. The dialogue that Vader does say here is so generic, it can fit into almost any protagonist and antagonist storyline. You made me what I am. You should have killed me. You are weak, etc. It's super lazy and uninspired. To make it more dramatic, Vader should be saying things he may be angry at Obi-Wan for. Like maybe Vader mentioning his mother, Padme, the Jedi Council, just something. What we get here is a bare-bones, copy-paste, generic, lazy, underwhelming, uninspired reintroduction of two of Star Wars' most beloved characters that have had some of the richest history and it's wasted. This just ticks me off. It really makes me upset because this could have been so good. <sighs> Let's move on. The more I'm on this, the more it upsets me. So Reva happens to find the safe house. She sees this as an area to safely transport Jedi and she gets upset. <laughs> Oh, so angry. After angrily knocking over whatever that was, she finds a button and pushes it, revealing the second door to the secret tunnels. So now that she's found this and Tala is heading back, Tala has got to bump into her, right? Tala is definitely screwed. But wait, we have the show cut back to Obi-Wan still running away. Vader catches up to him and takes a nearby container of flammable rocks and knocks it over. Vader then force grabs Kenobi and lifts him into the air. Vader uses his saber to set the rocks on fire and then drags Kenobi through it, paying homage to how Anakin burned in Revenge of the Sith. But there is a minor issue. While Kenobi is being dragged through the fire, 
Nothing catches on fire. His body doesn't catch fire. His clothes, nothing catches on fire. Kenobi is in there for like a good 20 seconds and nothing he is wearing catches on fire. This isn't how fire works. Anakin was exposed to indirect heat and his body and clothes caught fire. Obi-Wan is literally in fire and nothing's catching on fire. Well, he does get burned, so at least the showrunners are aware of what fire does to a body. So after Kenobi gets cooked to well done, Vader force pushes him out of the fire and the fire gets put out. Vader tells his stormtroopers to bring Obi-Wan to him. While this is happening, Tala is on a nearby ridge. Okay, so she somehow managed to not bump into Reva. As the trooper goes to grab Obi-Wan, Tala shoots him. Somehow the other troopers, and even Darth Vader, don't know where that shot is from. Tala then takes another shot at a nearby canister, which sets the rock ablaze again. And in comes, by far, the stupidest, most annoying and nonsense part of this entire episode. With the rocks ablaze again, the loader bot, which is just here for some reason, grabs Obi-Wan and carries him away. And what does Vader do? Absolutely nothing. And it makes no sense. Welcome, contestant. It's time to play the new game show. And that game show is, how many things could Vader do here to prevent the loader bot and Obi-Wan from escaping? Is it A, he could put out the flames using the force like he did 30 seconds ago so he can reach Obi-Wan. B, he could force lift Obi-Wan away from the robot and bring him over to the other side. C, he could use the force to destroy the loader bot and then use the force to bring Obi-Wan to the other side. D, he could force jump over the flames to get to Obi-Wan. E, he could walk around the flames, particularly to the left. The flames don't expand infinitely left or right. Or F, he could walk through the fire since his suit has high flame resistance as established by Lord and Wikipedia. Which of these options would you go with, contestant? Better choose wisely. Did you lock your final answer? Well, guess what? You're wrong! The correct option is G. Do absolutely nothing. Because Darth Vader has been turned into a f***ing idiot by the idiot writers of this show. Okay, bring it back to seriousness. Vader has all of the tactics I have stated that he could do to prevent Obi-Wan escaping, and he doesn't do anything any of them, and there is absolutely no reason why. There is no excuse for this, and believe me, fans of this show have tried to excuse it. The one most common rebuttal I get for this scene is that Vader wants Kenobi to escape so that he can suffer. And all I have to say to anyone who uses this defense is, you're wrong. Plain and simple. You want to know why? Here's why. Firstly, there is no basis for thinking that Vader wants Kenobi to escape. In fact, there are things in this series that establish he wants the opposite. For example, Vader telling his trooper to literally bring Kenobi to him. Bring him to me. Reva in the last episode telling Obi-Wan that Vanekin has been looking for him for a long time. He's been looking for you for a long time. And also saying that Kenobi is all that matters. Kenobi is all that matters now. Is that understood? And if Vader wanted Kenobi to escape, why doesn't he tell the troopers to stop firing? The troopers are very much not wanting Kenobi to escape. Vader has been trying to find Obi-Wan for a long time, finally found him, tortured civilians to get Kenobi to reveal himself, chased him, fought him, and now suddenly wants him to escape? For what? Why is allowing Obi-Wan to escape the only way to make him suffer? You can make people suffer without having them escape, you know. I am sorry, but this is not a defense. There is no basis at all for Vader letting Obi-Wan go. All this scene demonstrates is how out of touch the writers are with logic and reality. So yeah, Obi-Wan gets away by stupid luck, and Vader leaves thinking why the writers wrote him to be so stupid. We come back to Leia, who is about to reach the end of the tunnel and into the port, but guess who is waiting for her? Inquisitor. Reva. How the hell does this work? How did she get there before Leia? How did she know the tunnel would lead here? Is any of this going to be explained? No, of course not. <laughs> so yeah, now Reva has Leia miraculously in custody, and that is where part three ends. The episode begins with Obi-Wan recovering from the injuries he sustained. It is shown through the cliched method of slow motion, out-of-focus shots, and echoing voices. He gets placed in a back deck tank and starts to share memories with Vader, who is also in his tank. Once Kenobi is healed some and becomes conscious again, he swims up to the top of the tank to ask Tala where Leia is. We cut to the Inquisitor station where Leia is doing what she does best, being annoying and saying her father is a senator. Reva comes into the room to display her below-average 
acting skills and tells Leia that Obi-Wan is dead and nobody is coming, so she better just speak up. Back to the Jabim base, Obi-Wan asks Roken for help to get Leia back since she is a liability as she knows about this secret operation. Well, maybe she wouldn't be a liability if you didn't let her go all by herself in the last episode, you two. Roken just gives in to Obi-Wan's demands and starts to formulate a plan. Roken brings up a map of the Inquisitor facility and they talk about how they are going to get in and get Leia out. Which is not a bad question considering the fortification of the structure. Kenobi makes an astute observation that the base has no shields. You as an audience member may be wondering why the hell would this amazing base not have something as simple and effective as a shield like everything else does? Well, there's a very good reason for it. I don't see any shields. That's because no one would be stupid enough to attack them. You are not serious. You you can't be serious. That cannot be the reason there are no shields. Oh my god. What what the hell are these idiot writers thinking when they wrote this? Do they seriously think this is a satisfactory justification for why the base has no shields? Do they think this is how the world's different armies and defenses think when they consider what fortifications to implement in their bases? No, we don't need to fortify our defenses on the beach of Normandy because America I wouldn't be stupid enough to attack us. This is legitimately logic I would expect from a three-year-old. Kids have better thinking than this. But the issues with this line get even worse than that. Not only because it is stupid, but the fact that the base has no shields actually contradicts Disney Star Wars continuity. Because this is the same base that Cal Kestis infiltrated in the end of the game Jedi Fallen Order. And in order to get in, they had to disable the shields. There is even a line from Seer mentioning that they disable the shields to this base. I've disabled the shields on the outer sections of the fortress. These writers are so disconnected and do not give a single crap about maintaining basic continuity in the universe. They just write whatever BS excuse to justify the plotline of the episode they wrote and are completely apathetic if it fits in with the already established continuity. So that's what's wrong with this little remark from Roken, but as surprising as it may be, there's actually more wrong with this single scene. Obi-Wan asks for some help and some equipment, but Roken and the others refuse saying they are not equipped for a mission of this caliber. Tala says she will go with Obi-Wan because she has clearance as an Imperial in disguise. Is your cover still intact? We'll find out soon enough. What? Are you an idiot? That is a terrible idea. You want to go inside the highly fortified base with endless amounts of danger and enemies without confirming your clearance is still intact? You want to leave that up with the flip of a freaking coin? What if Tala's cover is not intact? Then everyone gets caught and probably killed. In what way or what sense is this a reasonable method to figure out your cover is intact? You both want to possibly jeopardize Leia's life as well as your own for this stupid nonsense? Well, they both are freaking idiots because they both get on the ship and fly to Nur and just hope that luck is on their side. During the trip, Obi-Wan is having trouble reconnecting to the Force for some reason, even though I thought we were already over this hurdle in Episode 2. Don't worry, this will come back into play later. He and Tala have a little talk about the past haunting them, while back on the base, Reva continues to interrogate little Leia about the secret path network. I need to find out where they are, Leia. And I think you know. If you tell me where the path is, you can go home to your family. It's kind of a broad assumption that you think she has extensive knowledge of the path, but if you think she does know this, why don't you just use your little force thing like you did before? No need to frighten or interrogate her, this is just wasting time. Just use your force trick and it's all over. Back to Tala, she lands in the base and starts to head inside. She is stopped at a security clearance gate and the officer asks her for her credentials to pass. He scans it and it comes back with information that this is not her designated sector and that she is not allowed in. So how will she get out of this one? Well, basically, she says she has higher clearance than him and that if he refuses to let her through, she will tell the Inquisitors of his interference. So he lets her through. Okay, this is practically becoming a cliché with how overused this trope is, especially in Star Wars. There is a reason security clearances and protocols are put in place. It shouldn't matter what clearance she has, she should still not be allowed through because of protocol. I am honestly exhausted of this trope of scaring someone into submission to compromise security protocol in Star Wars like this. So Tala gets into some sort of room to monitor Obi-Wan's progress. I wouldn't say that's the best idea, it's kinda risky here to be out in the open like this. But at least she isn't trying to talk to him here, that would be even worse. Alright, I'm inside the system. 
Oh, you gotta be kidding me. What the hell are you doing? Tell her you are in a room with enemies around who are within hearing distance of you and you think it's all fine and dandy to talk to Obi-Wan on the comms here? Even if you talk quietly into the microphone, it is still going to look suspicious because it looks like you're trying to be sneaky. Why don't you go to a more private room or somewhere else no one is around? Is this the only place where you can get the information you need? Even if that's the case, why talk out loud to Kenobi here? A better plan would be to just get the information you need, then walk to another room and talk to Kenobi. I cannot believe this is happening. I... J I can't. So Obi-Wan is swimming underneath, and Tala opens up an entry point for Obi-Wan to gain access. He takes down a stormtrooper guarding the doorway by strangling him. Personally, I think I would have just stabbed him with the saber, but whatever, they wanted a comedic visual with the stormtrooper floating in the water. We cut back to Leia and Riva, and oh my, Riva is actually using what I suggested earlier. Thank goodness, finally someone is listening to me. But apparently she can't get the info because Leia is too strong? Like... Really? Leia has very minuscule to no connection to the Force at this point. It isn't until Empire Strikes Back where she has any connection to the Force. And she isn't trained in the Jedi ways until past the original trilogy. So how the hell is Leia beating Reva here? Is the Force choosing favorites here or something? So while this is happening, Lola the robot sneaks out of Leia's clothing and hides underneath the desk. But Reva is not so oblivious and uses the Force to bring Lola out from hiding. Okay, did anyone check Leia for anything? when she was captured? Did they not check her clothing or pockets to see if there was anything in there that could be dangerous for her to have or anything useful for them to use? Does anyone in the Empire have any understanding of the word security? Tala continues to examine the schematics of the place to find Leia. She is still talking to Obi-Wan and oh, who would have thunk? The other officers in the room are starting to get suspicious of her. One even notices that this is not her station and wants her to identify herself. Wow! It's almost as if talking on that comm thing was a stupid idea to begin with. So this Imperial dude tells her to come with him. So what shall Tala do? Maybe scare the dude that she has higher clearance like last time? Okay, I must be going mental right now because I think she just took that guy out. Oh, she did. What the- what in God's name is wrong with you, Tala? First off, there are other people in the room and he is making very audible grunts. One of them will probably hear you. Why would you try to take this guy out here practically in the open? Why not take him out in front of their very eyes while we're at it? Perform a magic trick. Where even are you going to put him now? What, on the floor? You're going to just leave him there on the floor where anyone can see? Any random Imperial personnel can just walk in and walk out from their desk and they're going to see him. Hey, Bob here is lying unconscious. What happened to Bob? Tala, you make Austin Powers look better at disguising himself in enemy territory, and that is an actual comedy. The fact that this scene in Plot Point was approved makes me lose more faith in humanity than American politics. Also, while this is happening, Kenobi notices someone is coming down the hall and hides. Only only thing is, is that he hides and the stormtroopers were already looking in his direction. They were like 30 feet away and somehow they did not see Kenobi in the hallway. It isn't like they turned a corner or stepped out of an elevator right when Kenobi is out of view. They simply walk into frame already facing Kenobi's direction. Well, obviously no one working on this set knows effective staging. We yet again go back to Reva and Leia and Reva just repeats the same thing she has already said before. I just don't want anyone to get hurt. I give you my word. I. Need. Better. Actresses. So Reva has had enough of Leia's silence and decides to resort to more torturous methods of extracting the information by taking her to the torture chair. Back to Obi-Wan, he looks to have found the sector he's been searching for. We as the audience can tell this is the sector he's been searching for by the big, red, and obvious Imperial signatures blatantly painted on the door. He enters the room and it looks like it's a room full of Jedi who happen to be encased in the tree sap from Jurassic Park. Only thing is... Why? Why would the Empire build this huge facility with a section just for this? Like, did Palpatine wanted a trophy room in this base or something? Why is this a thing I don't understand? And why did they keep the little helmets on the youngling? Did they like it for decoration? So in the torture room, Leia is strapped to the chair and Reva gives Leia one last chance to tell the information she wants. Leia refuses and Reva enacts the chair to commence the probing. Obi-Wan somehow conveniently hears Leia scream from his location and tells Tala to create a distraction for him. So 
Tala conveniently gets Riva to stop the chair by asking her for an audience. In another room, Tala tells Riva that she knows of a location where the network is stationed and where they could get the advantage of taking out the path. Riva, however, is not biting and suspects Tala is lying. Riva begins to interrogate Tala, implying she is the reason Kenobi was able to get off the planet. No, Riva, that was because Darth Vader didn't do anything. I will not have my integrity questioned and admit you're a spy. Only if you admit you're not good at acting. So Riva tells the stormtroopers to take Tala to interrogation. Soon the alarm base goes off because Leia and Obi-Wan are discovered to be escaping by a seeker droid. While walking out with her though, they hear Kenobi talk on Tala's personal intercom. <laughs> Incredibly horrible. I have seen better choreography from student films. Let's look at that again more carefully. First, she slaps this trooper. Not shoot him, not punch him, slap him. And somehow she slaps him so hard he is knocked into confusion and makes him drop his blaster. Then she grabs the other trooper by the under chin of the helmet, swings him around, takes the gun from him and shoots both of them. This is one of the most incompetent displays of stormtroopers I have ever seen. Actually, I think this is the most incompetent I've ever seen them. Look, I know the troopers are memed for their incompetence and in other properties and stuff, okay? And I know we get a lot of laughs, but it's honestly creating a detriment in the Star Wars universe. The the fact is that when they are this incompetent, there is no tension or threatening manner to them. There are no stakes to this at all if a character can so easily get out of a situation like this. It isn't cool or badass, it's pathetic and silly. It makes the Empire and the antagonist of the story look like a joke. And when there is no tension or stakes and Tala can get out of this situation so easily, I will eventually get bored and tired of these characters in this situation, because there's no reason to be concerned for them at all. This pathetic crap needs to stop. Up. Now. So Obi-Wan and Leia are running through the halls and are encountering more troops and droids. Obi-Wan pulls out his saber to defend himself and we get some more underwhelming action. Hide! Hide where? There's nowhere to hide, Dumbo. You want her to become a ball on the floor like it's a tornado drill or something? So while deflecting the blaster bolts, Kenobi deflects one of them into the window and the window starts to crack. You would think these glass chambers would be built of something stronger so that a simple blaster bolt can't break it, but I guess bulletproof glass doesn't exist in the Star Wars universe. Kenobi reflects a blaster bolt at the door control to shut the door and keep other troopers from coming in. Leia points out to Kenobi that the window is cracking and he uses the force to stop it. Remember 15 minutes ago when he was struggling to move a small piece of metal on the ship? Well, now his force abilities have repaired themselves so quickly and strongly that he can now hold back the freaking ocean! You know troopers, with the glass cracking I wouldn't risk going in there. You know what would be better? Try to get some other troops on the other side of the hallway to close the adjacent door and lock them inside so that they drown. Take that, rebel scum. So Obi Everyone continues to hold the water back until the troops open the door and run towards them. The hallway structure starts to fail and the water comes rushing in. Obi-Wan runs and barely makes it out before the water gets to him. Now, with the base on high alert, whatever will our heroes do to get out of this fortress? Well, get ready, cause we have made it. We are now at the most memed part of the show. The part that literally no one defends, even Leia herself. In order to get out of this fortress, they decide they need a disguise. And what better way for Obi-Wan to disguise himself than by wearing a big enough trench coat to hide Leia inside? Nope, I am not kidding you. Kenobi hides Leia inside his trench coat and has her walking inside it along with him. Do I even have to say what is so wrong here? This is by far one of the most stupidest, laziest, incompetent moments in all of Star Wars and probably film history. And the best part of this scene is, is I know absolutely no one who defends this scene. Everyone, even people who overall like the show, know how stupid this is. Even the Leia actress knows it's stupid. How is anyone believing that this random lump inside this guy's coat <laughs> is just normal? How is this happening? When your 10 year old actress detects something is stupid in your show, you might want to second think what it is you're writing. This moment is worthy of its meme status, just like the Martha moment from Batman v Superman. All involved in the production of this and said this was good should be crucified on a cross for the sins they have committed against humanity and film. So they happen to make it in this so not obvious disguise to the landing platform and no one seems to notice or care about how odd Obi-Wan is looking right now. It is only due to Reva that they are caught before they get off the ship. Wow, Reva has to do everything. So it looks like our heroes are all surrounded and have guns pointing at them from all directions. How are they going to get out of this? 
Oh wow, what convenient timing for our heroes again. These speeders were just a minute late, they would have not been able to save them from this predicament. How did the pilots even know they were on this platform to begin with? So yeah, the speeders swoop in and conveniently blast the majority of the troopers down. Man, if only these bees had a shield or something to prevent something like this from happening. But no one would be too stupid to attack these bees, right? So Obi-Wan and Tala, of course, don't get shot at all in all the crossfire. Literally no one is shooting Kenobi or Tala right now, despite the fact how many troopers there are and how wide open they are to be shot. Also, Kenobi doesn't pull out his saber despite the fact that he can now. Again. Reva is now running at them, and one of the speeders lands so that the three heroes can get on and escape. Reva is coming for them, but gets stopped heroically by Wade and the other speeder. Our heroes take off, and Reva and Wade just have a very awkward stationary duel. Like, really, this is just a still shot of Reva and a speeder standing in place with a speeder firing on Reva blocking. It's just so awkward. So once they are in the clear, Wade starts to fly off, but Reva force pushes a bomb and it hits Wade. Oh no, poor Wade, he died so young. So now with our heroes having escaped this stupid ass facility, Darth Vader is not happy at all in regards to this outcome. So for anyone who would say that Darth Vader wanted Kenobi to escape in the last episode, yeah, you're just plain wrong, cause this scene completely destroys that theory. Vader looks like he's about to kill Reva, which yes please, that would be very satisfactory to me, please do it now. But Reva says that she put a tracker on the ship, which is on Lola the little droid. Which by the way, how did Leia even get Lola back? Did Reva gave that to her in all the commotion? When did this happen? How does any of this make any lack of sense? Also, what does Reva mean when she said she meant to let them go? This was intentional? Then why were you trying to stop them? Why have your base on high alert? Why have the troopers surround them? And most importantly, why kill Wade? He was a good man. So back on the good guy ship, our characters take a silent moment to honor the loss of Wade. The hero Star Wars needed. Leia and Kenobi take a seat and Leia holds Kenobi's hand. Aw, look how far their relationship has come in this horrible series. It looks like all is well, but the shot tracks down to see that Lola is now evil. In case you didn't know, cause you know, she has a glowing red eye. She is red, red is evil and evil is red, you know. And finally, the episode ends. This is by far one of the greatest modern atrocities in Star Wars and cinema history. This episode is such a joke that not only is it flat out hilarious, but it is hilariously sad. There are no words to describe my frustration and the level of hate I have for this episode. This is a scar upon the Star Wars franchise and everyone who worked on this episode in terms of writing, directing, and producing needs to be fired instantly before they get their hands on other properties and ruin them just the same. I wish I could say this is the end of the series, but it's not. So stay tuned for part three where we break down episodes five and six and finally finish this joke of a show. See ya then. Ah!